Welcome everybody inside the Anatomy Lab. Today we're going to take a closer look at some of the problems that we have to face when we face a computer screen for a longer period of time. You probably all are familiar with the posture that I'm about to show you. You know when we start to slouch forward because we've been sitting for a long time, we are engaged with the content or we're just simply fatigued from all the work we've been doing. What this means on a muscular level, I want to show you in a couple of stops. So just follow along. For the first one, I peeled away a couple of layers to show you the suboccipital star. It is a unit of eight muscles that help coordinate the movements between the eye and the head. In other words, through tiny adjustments, those little muscles make sure that our head and eyes stay trained on a target that is important for us and that we can focus on. Here you have those little adjustments. Maybe they are a little bit over exaggerated, but it helps you to get an understanding of what is going on. When we sit in front of a screen, very often this system gets fatigued because it has to hold steady for such a long time. Also it gets compressed due to the forward tilted motion of the head. As a result of this posture, a lot of people tend to get neck pain or headaches that then need to be addressed by a therapist. Here is one more view of the same posture from the side angle. You can clearly see how the compression of the muscles happens. I'm pretty sure by now you get the gist of what is going on. Another very interesting movement pattern is teeth grinding or teeth clenching. Quite a lot of us tend to do this when they are anxious or stressed from work and it's just natural that all these things play together and contribute to the way we feel after a long day of work. So let's have our skeleton sit up again and we're gonna look at the shoulder girdle from the backside. Here is another set of movement patterns that a lot of us perform when they sit in front of a screen. The slow shoulder raise. A lot of us will raise both, some of us will just raise one, especially when they work with a mouse a lot, but to make more room for the mouse and the arm they will tilt sideways and twist their torso and counter rotate their head. To give you a better understanding of this, let's look at this from the bird's eye view. Here you can see the slow rotation and then the counter move. You can see the shoulder on the other side gets more room. Next up is the big slouch. Especially pay attention to the rhomboids and how far they are elongated and imagine how much stress this causes for your back muscles. But be aware, not only your back is affected, also your front side suffers from this. Especially the pectoralis minor I want to point out. Because of the elongation of the back muscles, the pectoralis gets tensed or in a shortened position for a long time. Just be mindful of this when you get a treatment and always have both sides treated. In this move, just think about what the sunken ribcage that you are about to observe does to your breathing and your organs. Just try it out and feel how it affects your breathing. Last one up, the psoas. So when we sit for a long time, the psoas is somewhat frozen into one place and it will tense and shorten with time. So be aware of this because this can cause issues with your lumbar spine. So you should always stretch it and move it as much as you can. So if you would ask me what is the best or correct way to sit, then I would have to tell you, I don't know. I just know that I need to get up as much as possible. I need strengthening, stretching and cardio to counter the strain of sitting because I would argue sitting is in fact a pro sport. So I hope you learn something and I see you next time. Have a good one. Alex.